Hi, this is Doug from Stud Mag Loaders. Today I'd like to talk to you about a product that we introduced uh, in January this year, um, but I haven't produced a video about it. We've had a few videos done. We've had a really nice uh, interview with uh, Atlas Air Guns, and I will put a link to it in the notes. Um, if you do want to look up the, uh, do a deep dive on the DTM here, um, and how we manufacture it. If you look at Atlas Air Guns and look up January 4th, 2022 um, podcast, you will uh, get a real, real deep dive. It may be interesting for some of you that are interested in getting into uh, maybe manufacturing your own products for the air gun industry or some other industries using, you know, additive manufacturing like I do. Um, and I, I would encourage anybody that has an idea to, you know, go for it. Anyways, Let's just talk about this product. Uh, the first thing is, why did I design the, the STUD DTM, which stands for Direct Loading of Mags, uh, for the FX Impact line of air gun magazines? I did this uh, not to replace the, uh, our standby product, which is the uh, loader and feeder system that you've, I'm sure you've seen and, and hundreds of you own, uh, where you pour the pellets in, shake them, and they orient everything correctly. Then you load them into the loading system, put them into here, and then in turn, they go directly into the magazine, which is right here. Um, in this particular case, I said, well, maybe some customers just want to load an occasional magazine from time to time. Then maybe they don't hunt, maybe they don't go to a range, uh, and they don't want to buy. It, typically, we sell these in groups. We sell these in bundles of four loaders with one feeding system. If they don't want to do that, I wanted them to have another option. This is the end result of the product. This is in 22. I'm going to be demonstrating it in the 25 only because uh, the color corresponds a little bit better and you can see it a little bit easier on the cameras. Um, but let's just get into it and show you how it works. So I'm going to, I'll actually do it with a 20, 25 caliber. So we take uh, FX Magazine. We stake the first pellet like we, like we always do. Put it in there. Get our, get our pellets. <clears throat> Just take a fistful of them. And, you, and by the way, a lot of people say the shaking is tough on them. It isn't a violent shake at all. You can see as I'm doing this, I actually have two cameras here and I'm gonna zoom in on this, but you can see they just basically fall in the holes really, really easily. Um, Sometimes you gotta manipulate them just a bit, but uh, there we go. Got them, pretty much got them all, I think. So here we have, in about, you know, just 20 seconds or so, we load this thing up. You can see it in the picture here. You take the magazine, put it on the back of the DTM. Fits right in the back. You can, I'm gonna wanna dump the pellets out, you can see it there. And then all we do is just give it a rotate of this ring. Uh, sometimes it takes a few of these and I just completely loaded that magazine, which you can see right here. Put the lid on, you're ready to shoot. Really kind of neat, real proud of it, works great. <clears throat> now, let's talk about how this works. Um, and there's a couple different ways to do this. We, when, we, when I introduced this product in uh, January of this year, we have uh, uh, a gentleman in England that seems to uh, kind of follow us along and he develops his own line of things after we do it first, which is fine. We think there's room for everybody and we're, we're happy to have uh, other alternatives besides us for some of these loading systems. And um, this is the one that he came up with. I really kind of like it. It's inexpensive. It's less expensive than ours. You get them in UK. They ship promptly. You can buy them on eBay. <clears throat> but the way this one works, this one, let's put these away. Let's get a 22 out here. Uh, this one works by not sorting the pellets by head, uh, skirt diameter, excuse me. What this one does is you just pour the pellets in here, all the pellets fall into the hole, <clears throat> and the holes that are inside this product are actually larger than the head or the skirt. Uh, in contrast to, to our system, um, the way ours is designed is our holes that are inside the DTM are slightly larger than the head of a pellet and slightly smaller than the skirt of a pellet. So when you, pour, when you, when you insert a pellet in this hole, 
I'll just do one just so you can kind of see it. This pellet just basically goes and stops right there. Okay? When you rotate it, it changes shape and it drops through. Let's look at the way this guy does this. So we're going to pour the pellets in, just like we do with ours. Pour them in, give them a shake. And here's the first thing that you're going to see. I'm just going to, I'm not even going to fill them all up, but you'll get the idea of what, what the issue is. So if you look right here, with this, when this camera over here, you can see one pellet is turned in upside down. So the negative of this design is the pellets can be flipped in upside down. If you don't mind, you know, covering up all these holes and flipping this upside down like this and getting a pellet out of here and put another one in right, this could be an alternative for some of our customers that are a little more con cost conscious. But our product, unlike that, will never, ever put a pellet it upside down. It can't happen. Put them in, shake them around. <clears throat> They're already all ready to go. As you can see, there's absolutely no way that that thing can be flipped upside down. So, well, Doug, uh, well, how does it, how does it change size is essentially what has to happen. Well, what kind of happens here, this is kind of like a shape-shifting device is the best way I could describe it. And so picture, uh, I'm gonna put this aside just for a minute, picture a, a big pellet and picture a hole. And the way my product works is the two halves come together and they form the hole. One half is on each side. And what happens is when you rotate the elevating ring, what you actually do is lift up the outside ring and now what you've created is, a, is an area that's an oval inside of here. And not only is it an oval, the undercut, the top area has an undercut in it. So basically when this goes like this and the pellet's in the hole, the pellet actually falls sideways and then down into the magazine. So basically there's a mechanical action that's very elegant and very simple and it's happening and you don't really even see it where it basically creates a different shape to allow, it's basically a gate. So when, this, when, the, when it's closed, everything is sealed. As soon as I rotate the ring, I essentially open the gate and all the pellets can fall through. And if you look here off this camera, you can actually see these undercuts that are inside of here. And you can see if I drop this in this way, boom, it'll just drop right through. If I close it, no dropping through. So you might say, wow, that's pretty accurate for you to, ma to manufacture that thing. Well, we kind of cheat. After we use additive manufacturing to produce this product, like we do with our feeders and our loaders, we actually go back in and we secular secondarily machine every single hole in every single thing we make, and we actually size them. And not only do we size them, we check them with a go-no gauge, that uh, the total range in this gauge is only one thousandths. So we go from 220, 220 thousandths to 221 thousandths. So you'll see here, the go gauge goes in the hole and the go gauge, the no go gauge does not. Any hole we check, it's the same thing. Goes in, does not. And that's the reason this product costs what it costs and it does what it does. Um, the construction. There's three, main com uh, uh, there's three main components of the product. There's an, the black elevating ring, and if you look from the side here, you can actually see there's three ramps. One here, one here, and one here. You may be able to see it with this camera a little better too. And what happens is when I rotate this ring, I actually, there's three radial ramps that engage with the top outer section. And when I rotate this, it perfectly straight lifts this thing off. Three points are just like a stool and when you move it with three points it stays perfectly parallel and tracks really really beautifully. Um, the reason that the rotation, the reason that when you do this now it's unlocked and this reason this doesn't rotate is we have three socket head cap screws that we actually use as alignment pins and inside of the heads of those are custom springs that uh, cause the product to retract back to full position and give it a really nice satisfying feel like we're looking for. Um, another thing that happens that's not 
uh, typically uh, seen. If you notice, there's a little feature inside here, and hopefully this camera can pick it up. I'll actually circle it right here. There's actually a locating lug right here. So you see this area where there's no holes. There's a, an area right here, and there's a male and female interface in here that's actually on a taper. So every time I lift this thing up, this right now is free to move just a little bit. Now remember, when I bring this thing down, I need these holes to be perfect. When I bring this down, this feature locks rotationally and puts the entire rotating uh, features of these two products and aligns them perfectly every single time. And on top of that, it doesn't just do it with the lug. That entire lug and the entire uh, crown and head of these two devices are on a taper. So as this ring rotates back in, it actually centers and locks rotationally and positionally. So every single time that thing comes back in again, it's perfectly located in the X, Y coordinates and all these holes are gonna be lined up for years. Every time you cycle this, you're not hurting it. Every time this thing goes back to home position again, it finds it zero. Um, I'm really proud of the DTM. I didn't know how they would sell. And you know, I was, when I first developed it, I go, well, is this gonna compete with this product? Um, it actually doesn't. A lot of customers just, you know, they pretty much buy everything we make. They want one. They want uh, just a way to be able to be at the range and just throw some pellets in and uh, put them back in their magazine. And um, we actually have these available in three different uh, calibers for the impact. We've got them in 177. We've got them in 22, like I showed you just now. And we've also got them in the new uh, FX magazine, the 25 caliber by 25 round magazine. Um, for some of you that, have, that watch us real carefully, you're gonna see in January, I released a version of this with a 28 round. And uh, we put a, pulled it off the market after about three weeks. It just didn't meet our quality standards. What happened was the, the pellets were, uh, when you put 28 pellets in there, this is why FX got away from this magazine design, you basically sacrifice the distance between the pellets. And the web inside of here was so thin um, that it really wasn't great integrity. And it was possible if you really manhandled the product to get a pellet and crook it. And, you know, I had, you know, I, it happened to me a couple of times. I sold, uh, we have a couple of customers that we use as, as test subjects. A couple of them got them and they say, hey, Doug, it's not what we really expected. So we, we basically killed those. They are no longer available. So the, the only thing you can get is the 25 caliber, 25 rounds, uh, and this guy right here. They work like a champ. Um, we have sold a lot of these. We've sold them all over the world and uh, we have had no returns on these at all. I want to give a shout out to our three retailers. In South Africa, we have Patriot Outdoors um, and uh, they're stocking most of our product line. In uh, the UK, we've got Targets and Tins. They stock our entire product line. Um, focus on 22 and 177 just because of the laws over there. Uh, in South Africa, they focus mainly on the 22s because of the laws there that are 22s are favored. And then we have um, uh, high pressure pneumatics in Michigan that handles our product here in the US. Um, anytime you can buy, buy from one of our retailers versus ordering from us directly, we really appreciate it. These are uh, full service uh, retailers that have real sh shops. They've all got their own ranges. Uh, they're great people. We know all of these, all of these uh, husbands and wives and owners. They're fantastic people. And, uh, you know, don't buy from us if you can buy from them. Um, we get the orders anyway from these folks. So just do what you can to support your local, uh, you know, air gun shooting uh, facility. We appreciate you as customers. And as I've told you before, I'm new to the air gun industry. I've only been at it two years now. I've got a ton to learn. I'm humble and I'm, I'm blessed from the hundreds of people that have bought stud products. It's absolutely shocking how many of these we've sold. We, we, just, we just ship some to Taiwan, we ship them to Kuwait. They are everywhere. And uh, people are so kind to us and they've been so accepting in this industry and we just appreciate it so much. Anyways, you guys have a great day and, and uh, God bless you and thank you so much for the business that you give us and the trust that you 
uh, you've given us to, uh, to provide a, a pretty cool product for you folks. Have a great day.